Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to talk about preparing your products to ship. Now we're not packaging experts, so rather than talk about exactly what it should look like, let's talk about some things that can get you in trouble um, when you're not preparing freight correctly. Usually much of the freight moving today ships um, if it's less than truckload or truckload, it's going to ship on a pallet, right? A pallet is also called a skid. Technically, they're two different things, but for, today, for today's talk, we're just gonna say it's a pallet. Now, a pallet is usually wood or plastic. Let me get a good color here. And they're usually wood, so we'll use brown. Um, and it's usually a wooden pallet, right? And it's got some wood like this. And then you're putting your material on the pallet. And why this is helpful to the carriers is, and even at the unloading and the shipping docks, is you can get a forklift, two forklift blades under this pallet and pick it up and run it into a truck or run it off of a truck. So it is good and convenient to ship on pallets. But you gotta be really careful with your pallet configurations. So here's some things we see that causes problems when you ship on pallets and you don't prepare the pallets correctly. Uh, one of the things we see is you're gonna put cartons on, right? And we, we see they call it overhang. And so what we find is a shipper will build a pallet and he'll have, they'll have overhang on the pallet. So the pallet stops here, but the carton overhangs. That's a problem. So if you, you think about that forklift driver who's gonna put the forklift truck blades into the pallet. Now, if there's overhang on the side of the pallet that, he's, that he or she are running into to pick that pallet up, you're gonna get product damage because the forklift's gonna hit that product. Conversely, if it's on the sides where the pallet, even when the forklift's not running into the pallet, you load that on a trailer with overhang, it's going to rub whether it rubs to the pallet next to it, whether it's loaded to the side of the trailer, you're gonna have some problem with pallet overhang. So really important that if you're shipping on pallets, there's no overhang. You know, best case scenario is you've got a few inches on either side of the pallet that do not have product. But let's say your pallet configurations, your cartons actually take the whole width and length of that pallet. So how do you protect that product? So again, let's say here's your pallet and you actually did do a nice pallet configuration. So your boxes and say this is, you know, three or four high, right? These are all your cartons. And it's a nice solid square pallet. Cartons are configured correctly. There is no overhang, but you do have these corners that could be susceptible to damage. So they call them corner boards. And you run them up the sides of each of the pallets. Corner boards are really important and they do help protect the product a lot more than you think they would. This again, if you're shipping in less than truckload environment or even if you're shipping a full truckload and there, it's all of your freight in that truck, these pallets are gonna be right next to each other. So you don't want that rub, and they're gonna rub in transit. I mean, let's be honest, if you're running more than 500 miles in a truckload, there's some, there's some friction in that trailer. You wanna protect from that friction, and corner boards will do that. The other thing that we always recommend is prior to the corner boards, if you can wrap cardboard around these boxes, around the entire pallet, then put your corner boards, you'd be in really good shape. You could even put your corner boards and then wrap the cardboard around the pallet. That's super helpful. The other big piece is um, shrink wrap. So pallets, oftentimes you're gonna shrink wrap them. And the mistakes we see folks make is they either only use one layer around the pallet. You, you really wanna do at least two wrapped around these pallets. And then you wanna make sure when you're wrapping that that shrink wrap comes down over the pallet. We've seen situations where uh, the warehouse person is shrink wrapping and he's shrink wrapping, she's shrink wrapping right to the end of the box and not on the pallet. Freight gets on the truck, truck drives down the road and all of the cartons shift off the pallet. Because you're also, and corner boards should be the same way. Run them down the pallet if you can because that's keeping the freight secured to the pallet. 
Um, so that's, that's really, really helpful. So some of the things we've seen, you know, a lot of as of late too. Um, and again, part of it is, you know, believe it or not, the, this pandemic is impacting service. And in some cases we've seen an uptick in claims because we are, we're, we're seeing that the warehouse personnel aren't preparing pallets correctly. And maybe it's because it's a new person doing it or they've spread out their shifts and so they've had to retrain some people who are working in the warehouse that weren't necessarily there. They may have been picking, but they're not preparing the freight to ship. And so we've seen an uptick in claims for that alone. Uh, there's other reasons there's been uptick in claims, but that's one of them. And so it is really important that, you know, this freight is protected as much as possible. And, you know, the shippers and receivers like to think, well, it's a carrier issue, but if you give them freight that's not going to travel well in, in the environment they're in, it, it still is your problem. You still got to fix it. You don't want claims. Um, and the carriers have gotten really smart about, you know, honoring claims, really measuring the, the, that product. And if you don't allow the driver on the dock at pickup, what ownership do they have as a carrier? If that freight ends up damaged, they weren't allowed at pickup. They don't, know, they don't know how that freight was loaded. So what they're doing now is when they bring that freight back to a local terminal in a less than truckload environment, they're inspecting that freight at the pickup terminal. There's in some cases taking pictures of it because they wanna know if there is a packaging problem or this freight wasn't prepared correctly on this pallet. They wanna let you know ahead of time. And in some cases they may not move that freight any further until that's fixed. Um, so some things we see a lot of. One is uh, overweight. Depending on the products you ship, you want to be really careful how much weight you put on that pallet. So, you know, we like to say, don't put any more than 2,000 pounds. Again, now this, it, it does depend on the type of product you're shipping, but just as an average, you want to be careful how much weight you're putting on a pallet because what happens? Uh, you know, we've been working with a client today and they're shipping product in cases, right? And the cases are so heavy that, and the pallet's too heavy, that what ends up happening is the cases, the, the, the freight's falling into itself um, because they may be running from California to the Northeast and in less than truckload environment, that freight's getting taken on and off trucks too as it travels across the country. And so because it's too heavy and it's not secured properly, the freight's falling into itself and causing damage. So really important that you understand um, how to package that freight. And if you're not sure, um, you know, reach out to your carriers. They'd be more than willing to send someone over on your dock, look at your freight prepared and say, hey, look, this does work or no, it doesn't and here's why. So, so that's what you need to do as a shipper, you know, to help protect your materials. Really think about if you're gonna ship on pallets, what do they look like? The other thing that people do make the mistake of is they'll take three cartons and they'll put them on a pallet and ship them in an LTL environment. And you think you're protecting your freight, but you may find you're better off shipping those loose. And those loose cartons, if they're light enough, they can put on top of other freight. We know that there's all kinds of do not stack rules for carriers, they don't, uh, for shippers and receivers, they don't want their freight stacked. Um, but I would be lying if I told you the carriers never stack freight, even when they're told not to. You know, their goal is to utilize as much of that trailer as possible. So you will see freight stacked, double stacked when it shouldn't be. Uh, and so what's double stacked, just in case. So double stacked is you're gonna take this pallet and you're gonna put another pallet on top of it. That's double stacked. And that gives the carrier the ability to use a higher length of that trailer, puts more cube in the trailer. Now, if you can double stack your freight and it rides well, you really want to let your carriers know that at negotiation time, because that's a, that's a win for you. Uh, you're giving them better utilization of the equipment because you can put more, more product on it. Um, so what are the carriers doing about packaging? Because at the end of the day, you still have shippers that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing and the carriers do want to protect themselves. So we've seen a lot of, I'll show you, so there's a whole bunch of non-stackable freight, right? Cause your freight's gonna damage if somebody puts anything on top of it. So you'll see in the back of the trailers now, uh, we'll, they'll, they'll call them decking. 
they're able to add a floor inside the trailer. So let's say you have a 53 foot trailer. Typically in a 53 foot trailer, you can, you can put um, 26 skids in there, right? Well now with the second floor, you can put another 26. And again, pallets aren't perfect because you're shipping uh, furniture, you may be shipping metals, you may be shipping nice good pallets of widgets. Um, but there's all kinds of mixes of product for LTL carriers. And so what they'll do is they'll put the second floor on. So maybe you're shipping those loose cartons, they'll head them up on that second floor. So that's helping them. We're seeing now too where a lot of carriers who are shipping uh, breakage, so wine, beer, spirits, um, solutions, if they're in glass bottles, the, the, a problem with breakage, I mean, it's really hard. I mean, if you're shipping eggs today, God love you because it's, it's such a breakable product. And so what we're seeing now is carriers aren't just putting in the second floor, believe it or not, they have airbags where they're putting airbags in between the pallets to protect the freight from itself. So the airbags have been really helpful. The other thing we've seen them do, and this is sometimes a minus but and a plus, and I'll show you why. So inside the trailer, again, what they'll do, if they see freight that could potentially maybe stack too high, you wanna be careful about that. And, and, the, and the driver's like, oh, you know, I don't know, this, this thing could tip. Um, so you have these little hooks again in the trailer. So they'll put the pallet in, lean it, you know, right up against the side of the trailer. And then they'll get a strap, almost like a bungee cord. And they'll wrap that freight from one side to the other to secure it to the side of the trailer. So that helps them when it's moving along a length of haul, especially in a long length of haul, protect the freight from tripping, from tipping, but it also could cause some damage here with crushed cartons, right? Sometimes that strap's too tight and it's putting too much pressure on the carton and it's gonna wreck the carton. Um, you'll also see them put in just walls, like plank walls that they'll slide in between the pallets. Again, to, to not cause shifting or tipping and hold that product in place. Um, so that's kind of it on packaging. Again, we're not packaging experts in that it's really important that, it, and you probably have R&D folks within your organization that when you start cartoning your product, you know what type of cartons you should be using, how many of the product can fit in the carton and, and what is industry standard practice. What we wanted to cover today is how do you prepare it to get it in a truck to make sure that it stays intact and makes it to delivery whole. So I hope that was helpful. Reach out if you have any questions. You can find Aborn and Company on LinkedIn. You can find myself there, Joe Clifford, or you can hit our website and hit our contact us page. Thanks so much. <laughs>